All right, PS5 or Xbox. Roll the intro. I got a little bit here. There, so I decided to fix my hair real quick. So, okay. So in this video, I wanna talk about the, just a few components on both consoles and uh, the price and some of the exclusive games that will come out with with the with the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. And towards the end of the video, I'm gonna give my personal opinion, my personal choice on which console I would get at this moment. Yeah, let's get to it, gamers. First up, we got the specs. All right, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna pull it up here on my screen. I did some research before I uh, made this video, and the first thing that popped out to me was the fact that they changed their storage system from an HDD to an SSD. Now, SSD stands for solid state drive. And what it basically does, it runs your games faster, smoother, and cleaner. Now, that's what the SSD does. Whew, wow, that that is a huge upgrade for, for us gamers out there. Definitely when you purchase your PS5 and your Xbox Series X and you load up that game, you're definitely gonna feel a huge difference compared to your PS4 Pro and your Xbox One. I mean, it's exciting. It really is exciting. So, I mean, also when you take a look at the specs, this added on a 16 GB worth of RAM with that SSD, boom, wow, you're, you're, wow. I got no words. I mean, that's, whew, that's an insane console right there, guys. I, I don't know what else to say. That's that's just a beast of a console right there. Not just talking about one or the other. I'm talking about both. Like these both are whew, really excited, guys. I hope you guys are too. In addition to to these new upgrades, you are also able to play on on 8K gaming. I'm sorry, but that's insane. I already thought 4K gaming was insane, but on 8K guys this is it's just crazy man Ooh. 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 i think playing on 8 game 8k gaming right now is, is to a certain extent because it's going to take a lot of processing power to play the game now we are we are just really scratching the surface with 8k gaming so don't expect too much from it all you need to know is that you are you're going to be able to to play eight, uh, play games on 8K, just at this moment, don't expect too much from it. So, 8K, wow, damn, that's oof. now another thing that I noticed when I was researching the, uh, the different lists of of specs for the for both the PS5 and Xbox is that some lists would mention that the max refresh rate is 120 hertz, and that some lists would say the max FPS is 120. Now, I want you guys to know that these two terms are different. They're, they're not the same. See, I, I want you guys to keep this in mind first. So let's associate FPS with your console and let's associate Hertz with your display monitor, okay? Consoles, it mentions on the specs that consoles are going to be able to output 120 FPS. The problem is, your gaming monitor or your display monitor has to be more than 60 hertz to be able to fully utilize those 120 F FPS. I learned this when I was building my own PC. There are two things that you need to achieve this. So you're gonna need a display port cable. Now, I don't know if the package of the PS5 and the Xbox Series X will include this display port cable, but I think it's safe to purchase one now. They're not expensive, they're, they're quite cheap. Second thing is your display monitor or your gaming monitor has to be more than 60 hertz. So I made a video previously about me playing CSGO on 240 hertz. Um, basically having more hertz would help to utilize the amount of F FPS your console or your, P or your gaming PC will be able to put out. When I was doing PC gaming, I was playing a lot of Counter-Strike and my graphics card was able to put out 300 FPS, but my previous monitor was 144 Hertz. 
that means that my monitor is only able to output 144 FPS maximum. Okay, does that make sense? The PS5 and the Xbox Series X are able to output 120 FPS and your gaming monitor is only 60 Hertz. You will only see 60 FPS. Okay, does that make sense? I know it may sound a little bit confusing. I was at first. So I hope I made that kind of clear for you guys so that you can fully utilize uh, your console when you when you purchase it. So I think those are the main things to really understand when purchasing these, these consoles. If you guys are still a little bit confused or you have any other questions, uh, put it down in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer them, no problem. So yeah, let's move on to the price. So as we all know, the prices for the original PS5 and the original Xbox Series X both go for $499 USD. The digital version of the PS5 is $399 and the Xbox Series S is $299. Now, so basically what the digital version of the PS5 is, is a copy and paste of the original, but one without a disk drive. I think that $100 difference between the digital and the original is a really attractive price. The only reason I would see somebody right now purchasing the original would be if you were one to purchase the disc of the games and keep the cases as on, on the shelf or something. That's the only reason why I would see somebody purchase the original version of the PS5. I mean, other than that, I would just go straight up for the digital version. I would save 100 USD. Moving on to the Xbox Series S, this console is $200 cheaper than its bigger brother. And the main reason is just because it's weaker than its bigger brother in terms of the, um, the components. I mean, it still has 10 GB worth of RAM. It still goes off, uh, off an SSD. Still a very powerful system. I would think that this is a great option for you casual gamers out there who don't play games too much, play games from time to time, doesn't have a lot of time to really play but I would think this console this Xbox Series S is perfect for you game for you casual gamers out there now from what I've researched the PS5 have put a lot more reliancy on exclusive games and Xbox have put more reliancy on their game pass so honestly if you guys haven't seen the showcase of the PS4 it definitely showcased a lot of amazing games with amazing graphics it was very visually ap appealing and it just kind of got me more excited to purchase the ps5 not to say that i have chosen the ps5 i'd say also the xbox did showcase some some uh some interesting games as well um, like halo but unfortunately that game won't be available until later next year i mean other than halo they've got uh hellblade 2 they've got uh, forza They've also got State of the K3. There's also some, definitely some, some games to look forward to uh, for the Xbox. It seems at this point that the PS5 has more appealing games, appealing exclusive games. So it kind of gave the consumers a stronger incentive to purchase their console. Personally, I'm a huge fan of uh, the Spider-Man game that released in 2018. So, I mean, I definitely want to play the next Spider-Man, so. <laughs> kind of weighing in here for the last part of the video I want to give my personal opinion on which console I would get honestly as of this moment I would purchase the original ps5 that goes for $4.99 now I know the price tag on that is, is is a little bit expensive but once you really kind of understand the components that go into this console you'd understand why it's that price tag of course Sony wants to make a profit too right so um, this also goes for the same with Xbox they can't go any lower because they also want to make a profit right the, the components that they have put into their new consoles are very tech heavy and they're very strong technology you can't really complain for the price tag because I remember when I purchased the components from my PC they were expensive they were they were not cheap guys the only reason i want to get the original ps5 is because i am a nerd for collecting P my my game cases 
you know, and I like to, I like to keep them. I like to put them on my shelf, and I like to, I don't know, just keep it there as as a reminder that I'm a nerd. <laughs> no, but seriously, I am a nerd for collecting my game cases. Also, because when I watched the showcase for the PS5, it was it definitely gave me more incentive to purchase the console games they showcased as well like with final fantasy i was very intrigued i was very excited it gave me a reaction to to want to get the, the console unfortunately the with the xbox showcase it didn't really give me much incentive because i mean although you will have more um access to to the games from all the previous uh, generations i just I just had a better feeling with with watching the PS5 showcase. At the end of the day, I believe that Sony marketed and advertised their console much better than Xbox did. As a consumer, uh, as, as somebody who's struggling to figure out which console to buy, Sony just did a better job at marketing their console and giving me an incentive, giving me a reason, a good reason, to, to buy their console. It does not mean that the PS5 is better than the, the Xbox. It doesn't mean that at all. It's, it's all down to personal preference. Think of these consoles as luxury items because they are. They are luxury items. They're only meant for playing video games and maybe watching movies. But you need to ask yourself, do you really, really need this item? You don't have to buy it on launch date. There will be there will be stock at the end of the day and, and maybe a month later or a few weeks later this is a big price tag you already happy with your ps4 pro or are you already happy with your xbox one most likely the games that come out on the ps5 would also be available on the ps4 because honestly honestly speaking i think it's a bad marketing choice to focus the future games on only the ps5 or the Xbox Series X. Okay? You guys good? You guys you guys understand me? You feel me? Okay. So well, that's it. That's that's basically it, right? Is that is that it? Take it easy, love life, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!